In this video, we will take a look at how to write machine level code using Bitmachine. We will recreate the password checker program available under the presets menu point. So let's take a look at it. The user can provide their password. If it is correct, they are told it is. If it is incorrect, they can try a maximum of three times in total. This program includes advanced features such as making comparisons, using selections and counting. For best learning practice, it is recommended that you also write the program at the same time. Before writing the code, let's take a look at a flowchart version of the program to understand the logic. First, the user is presented with an instruction. Next, they are presented with an input field. Once the user provided their guess, the program has to check whether the user's input is the same as the password. If the input is correct, they are presented with a message and the program ends. If the input is not the same, the user is provided with an error message and the error counter is incremented. We then have to check if the error counter reached 3. If it has not, we go back to asking for the input. If it has, we inform the user and terminate the program. It is easiest to first take care of the constants and variables, adding them to the value section of RAM. So let's identify the values we will be working with. Firstly, we will have the password itself then our four messages, and finally, we will need three values to count and check the number of tries, a variable that gets incremented, a constant that we use to increment, and another constant to use for comparisons. Let's add these to the RAM. Before adding the instructions, we need to decide whether we wish to use Bitmachine or Littleman computer syntax. Explanation and example for both can be found under the How to Play menu point. The first two steps are straightforward. Print the instruction and take the input. It is important to note that these kinds of complex instructions don't actually exist on a machine level and we only use them for simplification purposes. At this point, we have to check whether the user's input is the same as the password set by us. Here, we need to remember that on a machine level, everything is stored as binary values, ones and zeros, and as such, there is a simple way to check if two numbers are the same. If we subtract one from the other and the result is zero, then the two numbers are the same. If the result is anything else, then they are not the same. So we first load the password into the accumulator, then subtract the user's input. At that point, the flag in the status register will be set to indicate whether the result is positive, negative or zero. We can then use this outcome with an if zero instruction. This instruction will check the flag and if it is zero, the program counter will be set to 12, forcing the CPU to jump to that instruction next. Here, the user will be informed about the successful input. It is also important to note that in real life, RAM does not compare complete words or sentences, as RAM can only hold a single character at each address, such as the letters A, P, P, L and E, instead of the word Apple, a comparison such as this would have to be a loop on its own where each character of the two words are compared one by one. If the flag is not set to zero, the program counter will not change and the execution will continue as normal. We will now need to inform the user about the incorrect input and increment the error counter. To do this, we must first load the counter variable into the accumulator, then add one to it and store the result back to address 40 to update the value. We can now check if the error counter has reached 30 by subtracting 3 from it. If the result is 0, then the counter is also 3, meaning the user has tried 3 times, so we jump to address 14, where we let them know that they ran out of tries. If the result is not 3, it means they tried less than 3 times, so we jump back to address 1, giving them another chance. And with that, the program is complete. We can add nodes for clarity by selecting the comment option. Here we can add the node and color code and view and edit the nodes by hovering over the address. We can also run the program and use the history function to look at each step of the execution. Finally, your full progress can be found under the RAM history menu point. Earlier stages of your progress can be found and restored from here in a non-destructive manner, meaning that the restored content will be added to the end of your history. Before we end the video, let's quickly also take a look at indirect addressing. 
Indirect addressing means that instead of using a fixed operand, the operand is a value stored in another memory address. This means that the same instruction can point to different memory addresses. Let's use a loop to see how this works. We will first load in a value, which we will use as the operand. We then increment it by 1, so it will change with each iteration. We then load this value into the indirect address register. After this, we will use a store instruction and the add symbol to indicate that the operand will be the value stored in the indirect address register. And now we can jump back to the beginning. We can now add the value to be used for incrementing and another one, which will be used as the operand. We will store the data at this address. Let's run the simulation. We first increment the value at address 30, then load it into the indirect address register. We then store the value in the accumulator at the memory address in the at register. We then jump back to the beginning and start again. And as you can see, data is always stored at the address set by the value in address 30. And that concludes this video. If you would like to learn more about the fetch decode execute cycle, the CPU registers or cache, click on the links in the description.